So we like to notice that there's a change in the test this year. L'Hopital's rule didn't used to specifically get tested. It was normal for me to teach it because it makes some of those limit problems that we saw easier. And those limit problems that we saw back in chapter two do sometimes show up. Uh, but now specifically L'Hopital's rule will be tested. That's starting this year, starting May 9th. And you might find that um, there are some problems that you could do without L'Hopital's rule, but you'll find now that there are some that you absolutely need it for. So some of this is sort of a mix of problems, some that you could use it or don't need to, and some that you'll absolutely need it. So I notice here this first problem. Um, I know I can't just substitute in 3 for x because I'm going to end up with 0 divided by 0. That's a problem. Um, but I might notice that that's the same thing as... Whoops, let's get the marker here. The limit as x goes to 3... Of that's 3 minus x times 3 minus x divided by x minus 3. I would simplify this. I know that 3 minus x and x minus 3 are opposites. When I cancel them, I leave behind a negative 1. So it's the same as the limit as x goes to 3 of the opposite of 3 minus x which is, now I can replace the 3. I don't have a 0 in the denominator problem anymore. That's the opposite of 3 minus 3, which is 0. Or I could try this problem using L'Hopital's rule. Uh, again, I'm going to check first that it works, that L'Hopital's rule applies. If I replace the x with 3, I end up with 0 over 0. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 3 of, I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is easy, that's 1. The derivative of the numerator is 2 times 3 minus x times negative 1. So I might get excited and try to use L'Hopital's rule again, but notice I have to stop and actually check that it would apply turns out that if I replace x with 3 now, I'm going to have 2 times 3 minus 3 times negative 1 all over 1. Well, that 3 minus 3, that's going to give me the answer of 0. The limit is 0. This next one, the limit as x approaches 0 of 7x minus sine x over x squared plus sine 3x. I could, I'm going to, in my mind here, or with the blue marker, replace all the x's with 0. I'm going to get 7 times 0 is 0, minus sine of 0 is 0, over 0 squared is 0, plus sine of 3 times 0 is also 0. And I do, in fact, have a 0 over 0 problem. I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 0. Of derivative of the numerator is a 7. Derivative of sine is cosine, so minus cosine of x over the derivative of x squared is 2x plus derivative of sine 3x is 3 cosine 3x. And I'm going to see, maybe this will evaluate, maybe it won't, and I'll have to apply L'Hopital's rule again. If I replace this, I'm going to come off to the side. Oh, here. I'll go up here. Replace, that's going to be 7 minus cosine of 0 is 1, divided by 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 times the cosine of 3 times 0. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is still 1. And I'm going to end up with 7 minus 1 is 6 over 3. My answer is 2. This next one's cool because we get to practice the fundamental theorem of calculus. So try evaluating because that's I, it should always be your first step when you're evaluating a limit. Could you just replace all the x's with 1? It might work. So I'm going to clear all that stuff out. I'm going to come up here because I have a suspicion that it won't work. 
I'm going to replace all my x's with 1. That's going to be the integral from 1 to 1 of, it doesn't matter, <laughs> if you integrate anything from 1 to 1, the answer is 0 because the upper limit and the bottom limit are equal. And I'm going to replace that x with 1. 1 squared minus 1 is 0. So I do, in fact, have a 0 over 0 problem. So I will apply L'Hopital's rule. That's going to equal the limit as x approaches 1 of, I'm going to have to take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Well, again, it seems like in this problem, just like the last problem, the derivative, or the second to last problem, the denominator derivative is easy. That's going to be 2x. And I have to ask myself, can I take the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 1 to x of e to the d squared? Well, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Derivatives undo integrals as long as that lower limit is a constant and the upper limit is an exact match for the variable that I'm trying to take the derivative with respect to. And what I get after the integral and the derivative cancel each other out, I end up with the same function that was inside the integral but with a variable change. This is going to be e to the x squared. And I was taking the limit as x approached 1. So now I'm going to try plugging that in. e to the 1 squared is just e to the 1, which is just e. 2 times 1 is 2. No need to apply L'Hopital's rule a second time. We've got an answer right there. Okay, so one more example here, the way you might see it on the AP test. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared of 2x over x squared. I'm going to... Try replacing x with 0. Because it might work. It will work. But you have to check. Um, so I'm going to replace that. It's going to be 1, 1 minus cosine squared of 0 divided by 0 squared. Well, cosine of 0 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So my numerator ends up being 1 minus 1 is 0 over zero. So number one, I have not found the limit because I've found an indeterminate form. Number two, I've determined that I can use L'Hopital's rule because I have tried replacing x with zero and I've gotten this specific form zero over zero. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. This limit that I was asked about is the same as the limit as x approaches zero of the numerator, sorry, the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. Denominator is e to the 2x. The derivative of the numerator, so derivative of 1 is 0. I'm going to have the opposite of, the 2 is going to come down, 2 cosine 2x to the first times the derivative of cosine of 2x, which is the negative sine of 2x, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Oh my. All right, so what can I do here to simplify this expression? I'm going to cancel this 2 and that 2. I'm not sure how long my 0 has been missing from here, but that should be the limit as x approaches 0. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time just to kind of simplify. This is going to be the limit as x approaches 0. <clears throat> I canceled those 2's. I have a negative 2 cosine 2x and a negative sine 2x. Those are going to multiply together to become positive cosine of 2x, sine of 2x. Oh, I missed my 2 at the beginning. This 2 canceled, but I've still got the, uh, this 2, the negative canceled with this guy. All right, and my denominator now is x. So if at this point you know a trigonometry identity that can help you, you could save yourself a lot of time and hassle on this next step. But I feel like I kind of made you a promise that I would not expect you to remember those trig identities. So I'm going to take the next step the hard way. For you guys. All right, I can confirm that if I replace my x's with 0, I'm going to have 2 times 1 times 0 over 0. I will, in fact, have a 0 over a 0 scenario, so I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. This is going to be the limit as 
Let me come all the way over here. X approaches zero. That denominator again is the easy derivative. My numerator is going to require the use of the chain rule. So if I just for I'm going to call that the first and call this the second. So it's going to be first times derivative of the second two cosine two x times the derivative of the second. The derivative of sine two x is two cosine two x. And I'm going to add the, that was the first times the derivative of the second. It's going to be the second sine of 2x times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 2 cosine 2x is 2 times, the derivative of cosine is negative sine 2x times 2. And I have a 1 in the numerator. This time, if I replace my x with 0, I'm going to have... Hmm, that's a good place to write this. So let's do this. Move some of this old stuff out of the way. Oh, step 1 seems so long ago. All right, so I'm taking this last expression, the one that I wrote in multiple colors, and we're going to evaluate it at x equals 0. So 2 times the cosine of 0 is 1, times 2 times the cosine of 0 is again 1, plus these guys, the signs, the sine of 2x, and the sine of 2x, again, are going to give zeros, because the sine of 0 is 0, all over 1. So I end up with 2 times 2 is 4 over 1 to make a final answer of 4. All right, tune in to one more video to find out about the trap.